So over the past couple of weeks, I've been talking a lot about how brands and agencies should build their teams. So on the brand side, if you're building an email team, I think there's kind of four core roles. It's an email marketer, a copywriter, it's a developer, and typically some kind of you know strategist, right? So marketing, copy, design, and then some kind of developer. That's probably the core. Some people could do all roles. Some people could do one role, et cetera. With agencies, right? I run an agency. There's typically like five people. It's those four plus an account manager. So because I've been talking a lot about that, I wanted to bring on Chris today. Chris is the co-founder and the CEO of a platform called Marketer Hire. They're a talent platform that connects brands with some of the best freelancers and kind of folks that are running small agencies to make sure that you can scale your talent on demand. Chris, how did I do explaining Marketer Hire? Uh, yeah, uh, th thanks, Chase. Yeah, I mean, the simple thing is, you know, we, we kind of say, um, you know, uh, it kind of got played out for a while, but it's true for us. It's, you know, it, it's Uber for X, it's Uber for an expert marketer. So, you know, um, thousands of companies sign up for our platform um, and, and use our platform everywhere from Fortune 100, you know, unicorn startups down to small brands, you know, local bookstores. They, they all use the platform and they always do it the same way. Um, and it's really, it's, you know, we're kind of at the forefront of on-demand hiring. So you come to us um, and, you know, kind of give us your requirements for the hire. We'll match you to an expert marketer um, who's, you know, ready to get started right away on demand uh, in about 48 hours. So it really is that kind of like hit the button, get a marketer. Um, and, you know, what's kind of magical about it is if it's one marketer, 10 marketers, it's all on demand. And you can turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So, you know, you don't have all this overhead of like worrying like, oh, well, I made this hire. Now I'm committed to the strategy. I'm committed to this team. You know, we're trying, you know, we, we think the future of work is flexible and fluid. Um, so whether you're an agency like yourself, you know, you guys always have to think about overhead, right? Client load up and down. Um, if you start with something like market hire, you kind of don't have to worry about it anymore. You know, it's all freelance um, again. So we're somewhere between like an Airbnb and an Uber for expert marketers and all the talent is pre-vetted. So we get, you know, thousands of applications to the platform, sign ups on the platform every month uh, and about the top 3% will pass our vetting and actually make it onto the platform. So um, we get a pretty, pretty large viewpoint these days on like how companies are building teams. Yeah, that's awesome. I know we first connected a number of years back and I think I was the first email marketer, potentially one of the yeah. first <laughs> on the platform. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I actually hired someone uh, from the platform in the early days. So it's, it's been a couple of years, but I kind of wanted to get, I guess, your take, right? So I was kind of explaining at the beginning of this, how I think about like brands and kind of some of the roles that they need specifically for email and then like specifically an email agency, obviously, right? There's so many other teams and so many other roles. So I'll kind of turn it over to you, like with kind of the data that you're seeing, kind of some of the trends that you're seeing, like what are some of the roles that people are kind of frequently hiring for? Maybe what are some of the underrated roles? So kind of open-ended, whatever you want to take this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and also it changes depending on the size of the company and the stage of the company and, and resources and things like that. But I think that, you know, the framework you had for email is um, a good framework. It kind of follows whether you're thinking about the whole team or like silos of departments or, or channels, which is you generally have to have some kind of strategist there's some kind of execution technician. Uh, and then there's obviously almost always some kind of creative resources that are required. Uh, and then analytics, right? Analytics would be like, what's happening so that we can iterate, 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 iterate. So, um, you know, for the smaller companies, smaller brands, you know, really common, they'll start, um, usually start with or, or want some kind of growth marketer or CMO, right? They want that lead person to say, kind of look across everything and say, what should we be doing? How much of this should we be doing? What's our budget? You know, and then on an ongoing basis, like, is it going well? Do we do more email? Do we invest more in email? Do we invest less in paid search? Like, do TikTok, like, you know, so, so someone who, who can be running strategy, especially for any brand that doesn't have, you know, a marketing co-founder, which is like most of them, right? I think, um, Marketing co-founders are still pretty rare, so 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 a lead market is really important. Uh, and then for you know econ brands, I think pretty straightforward playbook, right? Like you have to have uh, usually some kind of media buying, right? Um, some kind, you know, usually paid social of some kind. Uh, you have to have um, email marketing for sure, right? I think I mean, you, you've been a, a big you know, a big drive of a lot of brands kind of realizing it, it can and should be done at a, at a much more uh, sophisticated level at all stages. Um, 
Uh, but, you know, go back two or three years that probably, you know, I think, you know, you've been through that run. It was much less the case, right? There was still so much like low hanging free money being left on the table by a lot of brands. Still the case, but, you know, email marketing. So if you can't think of like the funnel, you want to have a full funnel really from early stage it's or until late stage, it's still very possible early stage to have your full funnel covered. Because if you're trying to grow a brand, you really don't want, you need top of funnel and you need the funnel to not leak, which is like email marketing, right? So um, you want the whole thing. And I think probably the piece that's, I would say like coming up fast that gets uh, left behind a lot of times these days, I would have said email marketing, probably still email, email marketing a lot. I would have said that more like maybe a year or two ago. Now I think it's a lot more, uh, I think the big one is like website CRO um, and marketing analytics. So I think the CRO piece, you know, you're, you're investing all this money in traffic, uh, bringing people to the store, bringing people to the restaurants um, as, an, as an analogy. Like how much are you investing in their experience once they get there? Right, it kind of sounds obvious, but I think a lot, of, a lot of brands, you know, whether they don't have a lot of dev resources or creative resources, like it's kind of just like the site is not this weapon. It's just this thing that kind of almost is inconvenient for them, right? Um, so I think investments in CRO uh, we're seeing come up a lot, and I think that's going to continue to happen. And then, you know, we, you know, we, one of the newer roles, newest roles we launched was was marketing analyst, um, and that's in response to demand. Uh, I think you know again. Everyone was sort of enamored with, hey, we, we can all run Facebook ads and do email. And then as you get more sophisticated, you realize that the reporting across these channels, you know, Chase, you have a you have a good, a good byline uh, on your Twitter, right? I think you say what is it 100 million? Yeah. 100 million now? 100 million in email attributable revenue. Yeah. Right. There's a reason why you put attribute, right? <laughs> like you, you have that word in there, right? Because because you, you know there's a difference, right? Um, and, and I think a lot of people still don't, right? They're still kind of just staring at different channels. And then you're like, hey, this all adds up to more than 100% of my actual revenue. So like, what's going on? And then you had all the privacy and data stuff around iOS, right? And so I think the we've kind of come around the bend here on people being like, like, do I actually have any idea what's happening <laughs> with, with, with my marketing? Uh, or, or have I just been kind of riding a, riding a wave of, you know, cheap Facebook ads? Um, so I think with a lot more of that scrutiny happening now around uh, the, ad, the ad performance, um, that marketing analytics became a big deal because folks were like, oh, it's no longer like easy breezy times. We, 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 we got to really understand, you know, when I spend this dollar and when a dollar comes in, like how did that actually happen, right? Um, so yeah, I would say CRO and marketing analytics. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, I was on a panel a couple weeks ago and they were asking like some of the most like underrated roles. And my answer was, I think like a technical marker, which I think in a lot of ways is kind of related to what you're talking about, like yeah. uh, analytics and in, even CRO, like it's fairly technical, right? So I think someone that really understands like how to tie things together, understands the data, um, can code maybe, can run these tests, I think is, is super cool. So we're definitely aligned there. Um, throughout like the past right couple of years, we've seen a lot of people as work on, gone remote kind of starting side hustles, doing some side consulting and whatnot. Like, what has that done for like your guys' talent pool? Like, do you now have corporate folks that never could do something on the side that are like badass from you know, <laughs> Shopify or other places that are now kind of doing consulting on the platform? And, and is most of the work that's being done on the platform, is it consulting versus like strategy plus done for you? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, we we launched in early 2019. So it would have been you know basically a full like, clear 12 months yeah. until COVID, and um, we actually already had a very healthy ratio, like pretty even ratio of the talent side for that first year pre-COVID. Uh, pretty good ratio of people who you know were freelancing full time, consulting full time. Um, and those who had, you know, let's just say day jobs, right? They were, they were a W-2 somewhere. And, you know, for us and for me, you know, I, I mean, like you Chase, I come from agency. I ran my own agency for a long time. Yeah. I was like, okay, like, you know, I know, you know, one of the things that we wanted to, we thought that we were going to be at the forefront of pushing for the future of work even before COVID was just, you know, like I, I had this, not even like a, a, a vision. I, I knew I knew it would be inevitable. I didn't know how long it would take that, professionals would would kind of be moving in this direction of saying, hey, look, I have a professional skill set. Let's just say it's email marketing. Yeah. You know, 
why can't I monetize that, that skill set in more interesting and diverse ways, like a musician or an artist would monetize music or, or art, or an uh, influencer or a creator on YouTube would monetize like merch. Like, they, they've always like diversified stuff. And so like, clearly with like that trend and the desire would be to say, hey, like why, like I don't wanna just work somewhere, right? If I'm a musician, I don't wanna just like go like be in the orchestra or somewhere or whatever it is, right? Or like be like an in-house band somewhere. Like it just, and so I felt like professional services were gonna have this reckoning of like, you know, whether it was like generational trends and things like that, but also really just access to customers, right? Like what did the internet do for all these businesses? It made it possible to reach customers in, in ways that they couldn't before. And so they had to do marketing, right? My local coffee shop, go back five, 10 years, they did not have to do marketing. And they wouldn't even think about doing marketing. They just open the doors and people come in, right? Whereas now you gotta have an Instagram handle. You might even have a TikTok. You have to probably have a managerial Yelp listing. You might even do some paid search. You might even do a Google Maps listing claim, right? Like there's all the stuff you kind of can do. And once you can do it, competition usually demands that you have to do it. And so the reason why I say that is the same thing applies to like talent. So now, I mean, Chase, right? You and I happen to whatever, have a risk tolerance or, or good fortune to start our own agency, right? How many people do we know that are in-house great marketers that just like, they would never get there, right? They wouldn't take the risk. They don't think they can do it, like whatever it is. Um, but with, you know, I think with digital, you now can have access to customers in a way that you just like the coffee shop can. And so, you know, when we build market or hire, that was kind of the vision. It's like, look, we're going to build this platform that's going to be this way that every, all these experts can get access to customers in a way that they couldn't before. And that's all, and, and you know, we handle payment, we handle, you know, all, the, all, you know, all these things that platforms and marketplaces do. And because we make it so easy, you know, everyone's going to start, more people are going to start doing it, as well as people who are doing it are going to want to do it with us. And so, you know, very early on, we saw that. We saw a lot of like awesome marketers. And that's why we don't like to say freelance marketers. I think that like insinuates that there's like a, it's like a different kind of marketer, right? Oh, like, I'm not a freelancer. I'm, I'm, I'm a mar I work, I work. So, like, what are we saying? It's really just like a taxation difference, right? Like, you're not any better or any worse because you are an email marketer at, you know, Allbirds versus Chase. Like Chase, has, have you never worked at Allbirds? Like, does that... Do you think you're worse than their email marketer? Like I doubt it, right? So, um, uh, uh, so, so to answer your question, yeah, we, we saw a lot of bats early on, and then with COVID, we did see a big uptake of people freelancing, you know, for the first time, right? Because suddenly they can fire up a second monitor, and why not pick up, you know, an extra twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year, you know, freelancing with marketer hire because we make it so easy. Um, so yeah, we saw a big uptake, and you know, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Nice. And let's talk about TikTok. Obviously, all the rave everywhere is right now about TikTok. Are you guys seeing kind of like, like say, for example, I look at TikTok marketer on Google Trends, I'm guessing probably like that never existed. And now like it's probably skyrocketing right to the right. Are you guys kind of seeing like some of those types of trends too? Like a lot of people come to you specifically for TikTok? Yeah. So it kind of happens in two ways. We, we, we definitely see an uptake in TikTok. And then we see also an uptake in um uh, sort of the existing pay, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, we're very specific in our roles. We have like 13, 14 specific roles. They're named very carefully, right? Our email marketing role is email marketer. It's not life cycle marketer. It's not CRM marketer. It's not retention marketer. It's email marketer. And, you know, we'll, we, we change these names very carefully against each other because it's a, it's a, it's a kind of platform. So we have like category offerings. Um, you know, we have a paid social marketer. Right. So paid social marketer and his skill sets below it. Um, you know, most of the time that paid social marketer, that means Facebook and Instagram. Yep. But increasingly they're like, oh, I want a paid social marketer who can, who can do TikTok. And often what we're seeing on the talent side is that the, the Facebook marketers, as you would expect, are picking up TikTok. So unlike a Facebook marketer who mostly the real true Facebook marketers, they're not like trying to also pick up paid search. Yep. Right. They're like, that's paid search. Like you guys have it. I, I do Facebook market. I do Facebook ads. You do paid search. Like don't talk to me. Right. Like, they, they, there's not really that much like desire to do both. The paid social folks are picking up TikTok. Right. And so what, what, what we, what we see a lot of it is both people coming in and saying, I want TikTok. And people also saying who have hired a paid social marketer from us already. Like, 
can can this person just do TikTok also, right? So um, kind of like Facebook, and obviously Facebook and Instagram are very integrated, but I think I think both Snapchat and TikTok are kind of being what we've seen a lot of on the talent side. They the paid Facebook marketers have brought those two channels under kind of their umbrella for the most part. It, it hasn't become this third thing like Facebook, Google, TikTok, three separate experts. It's yeah. really become Facebook plus and TikTok and then and then Google over here. So yeah, we see we see a big uptake. It's kind of funny because you know the real big spike that came out of nowhere was Clubhouse, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that was for like six weeks. <laughs> and then and then it was gone. Right. Um, which is kind of funny. Because <laughs> because we I mean, we had to like stand up demand. I mean, I mean, you, you what was a TikTok expert? Like You've been on there for two weeks or more than anyone else, right? So it's kind of a funny thing, but we did get, you know, it wasn't like huge, but it was a very noticeable spike of like, okay, is that, can anyone help us jump on this new platform? Because I think everyone had like TikTok in the back of their mind, right? They, like they wanted to get it to be one of the first movers because they probably missed the chance on TikTok, right? Um, I mean, it's still obviously a lot of opportunity, but um, it was just funny because the clubhouse thing, you know, died as fast as it kind of came up. I honestly kind of forgot about them until you mentioned that's funny. Uh, the, the last question I have is like kind of parallel to what you mentioned with like Facebook marketers, Instagram marketers uh, adopting TikTok and things like Snapchat. Are you seeing that same trend with email marketers adopting things like SMS? I think SMS over the past year and a half, two years just accelerated. Is that pretty similar in parallel? Yeah, yeah. So we need to do a lot of this, right? So like I said, we have probably like 50 to you know 80 unique skills and attributes that we put below each role, right? And we're like very careful about like how they're defined and, and how they're de-duped against each other. So, you know, all of our roles are carefully designed against each other. And so, yeah, we're always looking like, okay, is SMS a whole role or is it, you know, does it nestle as a skill? And then, um, so, so yeah, I mean, SMS on, you know, again, like we, we put it under email when it was like early, we're like, all right, it seems like mostly this is like email marketers who are picking this up. It was actually like between email um, uh, it was like very light competition from paid search PPC folks, like very briefly, kind of, kind of like, I kind of feel like it was maybe just a statistical anomaly for a little bit, but then it very clearly nestled within the email marketers. Um, so yeah, like to me, it's, it's a tool of email marketing. I mean, as much as it's not obviously email, um, it, it's, yeah, the email market, if, if you're an email marketer and you don't think that. SMS should be you, uh, you are either already wrong or about to be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. That's cool. Well, dude, this is, this has been great. Um, where can people find you personally online and then where can people find marketer hire? Yeah. Um, I guess probably best is like Twitter, um, at Chris toy uh, and then marketer hire, uh, just marketer hire.com. Um, and yeah, you know, like e e easy plug, free to try, free to get your first match. It takes about 48 hours. So, um, sign up and uh, it works really well. So cool. Sweet. Yeah, I can test to it being on both sides. Appreciate <laughs> you, Chris. All right, man. All right, cheers.